Trust Once Lost. Chapter 23. Oh, to be old again. The strangest part about the dreams I had with Luna were that they didn't fade. I was familiar with the sensation of recalling a dream when I woke, but unless I put conscious effort into anchoring the details of the dream into my mind, it would quickly dissipate. I was fully awake. Not the well-rested type of awake, but the special brand of insomnia that came from waking in an unfamiliar place. I couldn't see a clock, but it was still dark outside. I felt nothing, and it took me a moment to realize what was missing. There was no itch. My skin hadn't dried out and cracked overnight. When I was growing up, I didn't want to get out of bed too early to avoid my mother worrying. At one point, she found out that I was waking up really early because I was anxious about being bullied at school. So, after that, I had to pretend to be asleep until it was a reasonable time to get up, lest she suspect, correctly, that I was still being bullied at school. I held my breath and focused on listening to sounds in the house. The apples were farm ponies, so they would be awake early to do farm work, right? Sure enough, I could hear hoofsteps and the faint clanging of pots and pans from downstairs. Maybe they were having an early breakfast and decided not to wake me? I wriggled out the side of the bed to avoid having to remake it. Making a bed with my clumsy gripping ability would be a huge pain. Walking down the stairs was a bit daunting. They were just tall enough that I couldn't put one hoof on each step comfortably. Going up was fine, but going down, my legs bent the wrong way. My broken fetlock was still a bit tender, so I wanted to avoid jarring it. Otherwise, I could have just jumped down each step. I gripped my teeth in frustration. I wasn't about to ask some pony to carry me downstairs, so I just had to do this. Drop my forelegs to the next step. Ow! Followed by my hind legs. Repeat. By the time I got to the bottom, I was sweating, and my leg was aching. I hated this stupid weak body. I took a moment to control my breathing. I didn't want anyone to see me out of breath from such a short walk. I didn't have a sense for the layout of the house yet, having only seen it briefly at my surprise party last night. But I could follow the sounds of some pony in the kitchen. Ma. Granny Smith addressed me without turning around. Ain't you an early riser? Hair bristled on the back of my neck. My stomach dropped. Breathe. Think. You haven't been caught. She must have heard my hoofsteps and... Oh, right. The window in front of her was reflective. Breathe. Be calm. Don't let her know you were panicking. Good morning. I said. Good morning, dearie. She replied. Breakfast isn't quite ready yet, but you can help us sit in the table. I, uh, don't think that's a good idea. I looked down at my hooves and cringed at the thought of trying to carry around fragile plates while walking with three legs. Why's that? I'm not good at holding things with my hooves. I explained. So I might drop them. <sighs> Alright then, up you come. I'm not sure how she managed to speak with a scruff of my neck clasped in her teeth, but she did. She lifted me onto the counter and I was put out for a moment of the fact that I was standing on a surface for preparing food. I suppose that my rear hooves weren't any dirtier than my front hooves, but it still felt wrong. Granny gave me a mixing bowl and a spoon, which I managed to grasp with my hooves. It was more the letting go that I had trouble with. When I was done mixing the pancake batter, she put me back onto the floor. The sun was just peeking over the horizon, and the younger members of the Apple family still had yet to make an appearance. Do you always wake up this early? I asked. Not much choice when it gets to my age. She replied. This creaky old hip decides when it's time to get up. Take my advice, dearie. Don't get old. I don't much like the alternative. I quipped. There was an uncomfortable silence. Because I don't want to die? I added. Stupid! Now she's gonna ask what you mean and then it won't be funny! It'll just be morbid, and she'll be worried about me. Ugh, quick, change the subject. Arthritis is a real bitch, huh? Up, oh, language! Granny Smith admonished. Sorry. I squeaked. I squeezed my eyes shut. Stupid squeaky voice. Open your mouth. What? 
Before I knew what was going on, I felt something near my mouth and instinctively batted it away, raising my hooves to protect my face. My heart pounded. Relax. Breathe. In. Out. Don't fuss now. She ordered. We need to wash those dirty words out of your mouth. Soap. Well, that explained a lot. There's no need for that. I said. It won't happen again, I, I promise. Open. She repeated. Provided it wasn't old school lie soap, it should be safe, if unpleasant, to get some in my mouth. If this was the way things were done around here, then it wasn't worth making a scene over. I sighed and opened my mouth. The soap was apple-scented, of course, but I could hardly taste that with the overwhelming bitter suds that were forming. I wanted to spit and scrape my tongue, but I wasn't about to spit on the floor, so I focused on breathing through my nose and not swallowing. I was quite proud that I managed to not make a face. Applejack came down the stairs a moment later, and I saw Granny Smith quickly place the soap back next to the sink. My eyes widened in realization. Granny didn't want AJ to know. Morning, Green. Applejack greeted. You're up early. Did you sleep all right? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak with a mouthful of soap. Applejack gave me a suspicious look, and I almost swallowed nervously. I'd have to risk saying something. I couldn't just stand here. May I be excused? I almost got away with it, but at the last moment, soap touched the back of my throat, and I hiccuped. A soap bubble came out. Applejack's heart sank as she took in the situation. It's all right, Green. She said. You don't have to ask, just go. Applejack waited until she heard the filly shut the bathroom door, before she turned to address her grandmother. What were you thinking? AJ asked. She's having a hard enough time trusting ponies as it is. Applejack could hear Green spitting and gagging while she ran the water. Phillies need to be raised right. Granny insisted. I can't have her using that kind of language around Apple Bloom. There are other ways to do that. Applejack stomped. Ways that don't involve forcing soap in her mouth. It worked for you, didn't it? Th this is different. Applejack said. Look, please, just... Please leave her discipline up to me. Since when are you the expert on raising foals? That was a shot to Applejack's confidence, but she plowed on. She's a foster child, AJ explained. There are rules, and one of the most important is no physical punishments. The two adults stopped talking as Green walked back into the kitchen. Don't worry about it, said Green. We'll just pretend this never happened. Oh, sweet Pete, look. AJ sat the filly down. I know you're trying to protect us, but you have to promise me that you're going to be honest. If some pony hurts you or does something that makes you feel uncomfortable, I'm not like that, okay? The filly interrupted. I let her put the soap in my mouth. It's not like she forced me. Applejack realized she may be walking on very shaky ground. Uh, green. AJ hesitated. If some pony, uh, I mean, d just because he let some pony do something, it doesn't mean you're okay with it. The filly was calming herself down with breathing exercises again. It was just soap, said Green. It's not like I'm gonna die. Oh my god, guys, it's soap from Modern Warfare. <laughs> Anyway, let's get on to our positive donators. Top donators are 630, Badass Waffle, Only One Thing, Subaru Orion, Iron Sky, and Jesse Smith. Match Break 109, Jack Tf, Dark Side, Raiden Rolls, Black Moon, Our Pastel Skies, Austin Rollins, Stu Hex, Swarp of the Remordred, Omicron Library, Rinside 9852, Will, Chris Twinkie, Rise, Soul Shadow, Moon, Luigi88, Chance Across, Big Smoke 369, Bobcat GDF, Murder Princess, and many more amazing people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.